Finally tonight, the grand finale of the four-day celebration of Queen Elizabeth's 60-year reign. Andy Davies of Independent Television News recaps the day. When it comes to scenes etched in patriotism, the Mall provided an almost perfect visual motif today. The bobbies lined up at the front, the cheering crowds orderly behind, and all framed in an avenue of union flags. A slow mass march, and all for a glimpse of a monarch's wave. The day began to the soundtrack of Packle Bell, in contrast to the pop concert setting here of the night before. This, the fourth and final day of the Diamond Jubilee, set aside for prayer and no little pomp. In place of Prince Philip in the state Bentley, a lady-in-waiting surveyed the cheering crowds. This was a day of ceremony punctuated by fanfares, each phase ushered in by waves of curtsies and bows, and frequently set to a chorus of clearly heartfelt gratitude for a 60-year reign. As she left St. Paul's Cathedral, the Queen was shown the spot where Victoria, the last monarch to celebrate a diamond jubilee, held a similar service outside. It was 1897. She'd been too frail to tackle the steps. At the nearby Mansion House, it was the turn of the Commonwealth Youth Choir to sing the Queen in to the next reception. Then it was to Whitehall, and Westminster Hall for a lunch of Welsh lamb and Jersey royals with 700 guests, many of them tradesmen and women. You are a constant in a changing world and a constant good. Earlier today, the Queen reciprocated the many tributes with a specially recorded message to address the nation. The events that I have attended to mark my Diamond Jubilee have been a humbling experience. It has touched me deeply to see so many thousands of families, neighbours and friends celebrating together in such a happy atmosphere. At the palace and down the mall, they assembled in their hundreds of thousands as the military took over and with a fly pass signalled the finale of this Diamond Jubilee weekend. <laughs> 